Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. During this webinar, we will cover ETAP eTrax, the latest integrated solution for designing, planning, and operating rail traction power systems. eTrax is utilized by railway operators, owners, and engineering consultants as an integrated traction power design and management system. There are many project goals and objectives that may be required during a traction power project and too many challenges are still present due to out-of-date technology still utilized for these projects. We will be discussing these challenges as well as existing solutions provided by eTrax. The solutions include an integrated AC and DC system that uses a digital twin which allows traction power groups to use the same model created in the design and planning phase within the operation stations for traction SCADA and power management. When we do traction power analysis, we need to understand the existing and planned substation capacity. From there, we can look to implement energy efficiency initiatives and enhance train timetables. This will allow us to reduce energy consumption and power losses which is a constant priority for traction power operators and engineers. Also, as demand increases, we look to analyze the existing infrastructure to handle additional trains, or we evaluate and optimize the system and improve the overall design. When these changes are proposed, safety and protection is also evaluated, so there is a requirement to integrate traction power analysis with the ability to analyze potential faults perform protection and coordination studies, and optimize arc flash results. As we've discussed these project goals and objectives with many of our users, here are some of the challenges that are extending the timeline of these projects. Uh, we've heard things from an archaic graphical user interface, so using old technology that hasn't been up to date, and it's cumbersome to find the locations of characteristics or how it's consolidated Another one is multiple products for multiple objectives. So we previously talked about the goal of doing traction power studies, but then moving into short circuit protection phases. And with that, you have to have a completely separate software to either integrate or to, to use all together because one product doesn't have everything. So it's different products for multiple objectives. Uh, we made our own, but it's not up to date. Many of our ETAP users have previously created their own traction power software, but have switched to ETAP because that company's focus is not on the software side. They're trying to do services, not, not develop and design a software. And of course, interfacing with third-party applications, many of the data we collect or are handed to us on the front end is from different interfaces like CAD drawings or Excel data, where having the inability to bring in that data to save time has been a problem for many of our users until um, switching to eTrax. Engineering information is manually shared with the operations team. The engineering team does all this work to build the digital twin, to build the model and do the analysis, and then the operation team has to recreate that SCADA from scratch without being able to take advantage of all the information that was input into the engineering design and planning model. Some of them are, are, are technical issues, uh, running AC and DC analysis in two different databases. So in many projects you have an AC transmission, transmission system integrated with DC traction power and AC signaling. And the softwares or the technology they use requires two different databases to run each each system, the AC system and the DC system, completely separately. And then, of course, you have different conditions and scenarios, and managing it is extremely time-consuming. And with these models, you have integrated rolling stock, and it's, it's difficult to add the rolling stock information and analyze performance. They don't have a library of rolling stock information, and if they do, it's very difficult to add it themselves. And then one of the ones that are very popular right now is energy storage. Having a technology, having a project that can't assess energy storage systems is a problem today. So this is the conversations we've had with many of the traction power engineers and operators, and, and this is why we developed eTrax. ETAP eTrax is a software for design, planning, optimization, and operation of integrated AC and DC railway traction systems. And this is done on a GIS application or a one-line diagram. And this will, we will go through and cover 
a lot of the quotes we previously heard from, from existing users of this type of technology, we will cover how eTrax overcomes these challenges. To overcome the challenges that are prevalent within the industry, you need a traction power solution, which is your single source of truth, containing information regarding the geographical landscape, rolling stock, routes, train timetables, and other information that we will be going through. We will use this to analyze and improve train performance and manage the system. And with eTrax, this is all done with an easy to use graphical user interface, which we will soon demonstrate. Here are some of the capabilities we will be going through specifically. eTrax contains a unified time series AC and DC traction power simulation on one synchronized geospatial view and one line diagram. The model includes equipment for traction systems like auto transformers and rectifiers. Substation assets are also included and can be pulled at any time from the templates provided by eTrax. This is considered for train performance calculations, which converts mechanical characteristics of the traction system, such as elevation, track bend radius, into load demands and electrical calculations. And this can be expanded to a traction eSCADA energy management system and incorporate the real-time data to perform predictive simulations so you can go from design to operation. Before we go into the software, I want to summarize some points on the foundation of the traction system. The model would be geospatial and logical, logical being the one-line diagram. The geospatial view provides functionality to automatically create spacing between stations, which we will soon see. And the results generated, as well as the train animation, can be seen on the geospatial view or the one-line diagram. Now let's take a look at creating a model. ETAP allows you to import from different file formats, uh, including OpenStreetMap and Excel and others. So in this project, I'm going to import an Excel file the Excel file containing information about the track segment, track nodes, train stations, and markers. We can provide the Excel sheet to you, and you can update it with your project information. And once you import it, the GIS will automatically create the traction power system uh, based on that Excel or the, the application that you use to import it. All the data will come in and the modeling and the connectivity. And from there, we can automatically generate a one-line diagram. So then you'll have a synchronized GIS with the one line. So we see the station and the track information. Now, if you need to align equipment, we have alignment tools that allows you to select how you want to align it, and it automatically aligns the station with the routes. So now we can see the, the traction power network on the one line or the GIS system. And once it's in ETAP, you have the ability to add equipment with the using the toolbar as well. So on this train station, we can add additional tracks. And this is done very similarly to, if, if you're familiar with ETAP in general, this is done just the same as, as any ETAP project file with, with equipment. So we can add the tracks and you'll see the, the shape total, the length is automatically generated from GIS. We can add another station and we can apply, we can apply bend radiuses. So right now we can apply the bend radiuses on different points of the track and update the information. And then you can reshape edge based on that bend radius and the software will automatically smooth out the curve. And we can add speed limit markers. And all of this will also update the one line diagram. So they're completely in sync. So now let's look at a project we've previ previously configured. I have a full GIS view here that you can see and you see the traction power network overlaid on top and a corresponding one line diagram and we can zoom in to see where the train stations are. We can get a closer look. And you see here, these boxes represent the train stations. And 
within the corresponding one line, if I wanted to see where this train station was, I can just show on one line view, and you'll see this automatically changes and highlights the location of that corresponding station. And of course, I can go back the other way and find in my distribution view and highlight that, that station. And in the one line diagram, if we zoom out here, I can see that I have my medium voltage traction power network modeled. So we want to take a full look at the one line. I see my medium voltage traction power network and the connected transmission system. So we have our transmission equipment connected as well, the system, and that's also integrated with our low voltage signaling power. So in this model, we have three phase, single phase, AC and DC, and E-Trax will run all of this in a unified engine. So, so again, the ability to run an AC, DC unified engine, three phase or single phase in this project. And for those who are familiar with ETAP, once you have the one line created, we can use the standard toolbar to add any equipment we want to the one line diagram from the transmission system or the signaling. Uh, and you can either use the toolbar and build it, or you can take advantage of our templates that we've provided within ETAP. Uh, so if I go to the substation folder, you'll see a number of, of templates that have been provided that you can take advantage of in your project as well as create your own and save them. So if you, have, if you have models that are very similar in nature, you can save them to a template folder anywhere in your directory, pass them to any individuals from your team to access and take advantage of from project to project. Next, we can configure and assign our train information. So I can pull up the track groups directly from GIS, and that one opens up the specific one that I selected but within here, I can see all the track groups that, my, that is composed of my project. And this goes from station to station. And as I select it, it, the GIS is updated based on my selection. And all the components incorporated in that gr track group are shown with the details. Now, if I change anything in GIS, this tabular view is automatically updated. So this is in sync. And this contains our all the, the information within the track group, GIS components, lengths, bend radiuses, anything that we need to consider is incorporated here. After the track groups, we can look at the route. So each route again is highlighted. And as I select the route, the GIS is updated to show the one I'm selecting and it's color coded. So we can, we can assign a color per track route and that's done in the theme manager. So if I go to a route, I can assign a color. The distance is automatically calculated and the stations are, not, are identified for each route and per group. So we know track one contains these four track groups from, from one station to another and the distance. After that, we have our routes and we go to, to input or import the train schedule. So you can import from an Excel sheet or you can manually add one. So you can add the number of trains, train names, start time, headway time, dwell time. Or we can import this data or you can have the, if it's an existing project and you don't have this information, you can have e automatically populate a train schedule to get started. And this, this does, you can assign the train schedules per day. So I can assign specific days for these schedules and you can do it per route. And of course, all of this is unlimited. There's no limit to what you can do. And this will contain the arrival time, the dwell time, departure and trip time per station. And you have it for each train. So each train is shown. Now, what are these trains composed of? That's in the train config. So I can assign a train from the ETAP library. We can assign passenger or freight train, and we can put the acceleration limit and deceleration limit, and you select it from the library, which many people who are familiar with ETAP are familiar with the ETAP library. Um, so there's different manufacturers and models within the library, and you, and you can add them here, or you can have us add them. So you can call in and have us add them. And these libraries can be project specific. So this one's uh, minimized to this project. However, if you have, you can use the main ETAP library that contains all of the locomotives that we have or create a project specific one.
and this is unlimited so you can assign as many train configures, configurations as you like and then assign those configurations to the train IDs. So we have the train IDs that we saw on the track and here I can select which configuration I want, the number of consists it contains, and you can mix and match. So if, if you want, you can have, it's very flexible in the sense that you can have train 9517 contain a combination of different configurations. There are different results we, we can analyze to improve train performance. We can determine the tractive effort, which considers the performance curves for tractive or braking versus speed incorporated in the locomotive library. We can analyze trip times, calculate power consumption and demand. And since we do have the integrated rolling stock library, we can sim easily simulate the effect of upgrades and retrofits. And all this analysis can be done while incorporating planned or unplanned events in different scenarios to get a complete picture of train performance in many different conditions or configurations. And not only is it analyzing the train itself, but it's taking a look at the overall infrastructure. There's different methods and analysis and studies we can do to optimize the substation location and capacity. With an existing system, it's very easy to identify power supply inadequacies and pinch points. An ETAP will, will automatically generate a train schedule, an optimized train schedule for an existing system. But if you have a new system, you need to consider multiple, multiple scenarios. And ETRAX allows for an unlimited amount. You can have different revisions and configurations, make many different changes to the system, incorporating them into scenarios, and pull out the scenario at any time to rerun the study. And when you're sizing equipment, many industry standards are incorporated and it automatically sizes that equipment against industry standards or alerts you if you've exceeded any of the guidelines. As we all know, there's a large demand with renewable energy and traction power systems are not any different. Different technology is used to maximize energy efficiency, such as battery energy storage, flywheel storage, and regenerative braking. This project that we were previously working on does have a battery energy storage system and regenerative braking. So I can look at the battery energy storage uh, through the editor, and this is selected from the ETAP library, so I have a lithium ion battery. And the BMS is set that if DC bus 4 is greater than 101%, then DC bus 4 will charge the battery. But if DC bus 4, which is here, becomes less than 100%, then this battery will discharge, improving the voltage at this location. Before we run this case, let's take a look at the, whole, the solution parameters. So we know we're running an unbalanced AC-DC unified engine. And here I can assign what I'm going to run, what I'm going to include in my simulation. So I'm going to run a simulation for Monday, and I'm going to select the tracks I'm going to run. I'm going to run track one, two, three, four. And you can also select the stations that you want to run. I'm going to run them all for Monday. And you can do it for a user-defined specified amount of time, or I can do it for the complete train schedule. You also can assign particular events. So in the study case, in the study case I have these events set for 9 a.m. Um, I have specific amount of switches that are being open and others that will close at the same time. So you can configure different events and isolate different equipment and that will be incorporated into the simulation at the specified time. We have certain alarming you can set. So you can do loading alarming. You can look at voltages at the bus or track nodes. You have alarming specific to the pentograph. So you have the critical alarm set. You can apply marginal if you like. Set the duration that, that it needs to exceed to alert you. And then transfer and then alerts for the transformer and rectifier specifically. So we have average load, rolling demand, and peak demand, the duration, and of course the interval. So this will alert you based on the options you've selected here. And finally, determining which devices you want to plot. So any of the devices you select here will create an output plot that will show after the simulation is run. But we have certain amount of buses selected, we have the battery selected, um, DC track nodes are included, and we'll show some of the plot characteristics 
after the simulation. So we run the simulation from the toolbar. Um, this toolbar allows you to access specific items for e-tracks, one of them being the train schedule that we uh, accessed earlier from the GIS. You can actually access it from the toolbar directly as well. Display options, which will help determine which results you're going to show on the screen once the train is running. So we'll add a couple more options to the train results. And from here, I can run the calculation. Now this system will show you how much time is elapsed and how much time you have remaining. So you'll always know what you have remaining for the simulation to take, for the simulation to complete. So initially, I see my initial conditions of the system, uh, where the trains are starting. You can see the starting location of each train. You see the bus voltages, and you can see this across the entire transmission system. So again, the results are running across the transmission system and will continue to do so as we move the trains across their, their routes. And also to get a visual effect on the results, we can turn on contouring. This will give me a visual snapshot. I, I want my entire background filled, so I'm just going to fill background. Now I can drag my solution, my, my time slider, and instantly see at any particular time shown on the time slider, I can see the results at that time. Another option I have is to just play the time slider and let it run on its own. I'm going to set the playback to every one second. Once I hit play, you'll see the trains are dynamically moving and the results are adjusting every second. So the simulation and animation on the one line makes it very easy to see the results as the trains are moving from station to station. So I see the bus voltage is set at 99% right now. We have a highlight of activity coming from the energy management system. We know that the battery is going to discharge if DC bus 4 is less than 100. So we see the discharge current, we see the discharge rate, and we also see some current going up into the inverter from the feeder, and that's due to the regenerative braking of some of the particular trains in the station. But you do notice once we hit 100%, the battery is no longer discharging as set in the battery, the, the battery energy storage management system. We can also take a look at the events we set in the study case editor. So we set switches to open at 9 a.m. Those events are tracked in the, in the traction power time slider. We can move forward through particular uh, timestamps. I have it set every 10 seconds, but this is user defined. So you can set how often you want the time slider to move forward, reverse, or event based. And we can pause. And at any time, we can open the display options and decide which values we want to display on the one line for the results. Currently, I'm showing the, the train uh, energy. I'm showing tractive effort and neck acceleration. I can easily just change it to route. And in this case, we see the speed, location, and distance from the train station and the grade, which is essentially the incline. Right now, it's pretty nil, uh, but you can see the distance from the the last station and the speed at which the chain is traveling. So as it arrives, as it arrives towards its destination, you'll see this train decelerate. Since this train has arrived at the station, it's now stopped and showing zero kilometers per hour. The results are calculated throughout the entire network, so we can view the transmission system. And even as the change are, as the trains are moving, we can clearly see the the flows throughout the transmission substation are, are moving, are dynamically updating. We, we look at the current flows being fed through the transformers, and this is a unified AC-DC engine. So again, as the AC transmission is, is being affected by the DC traction system, all the flows are being updated. Now that we've run the simulation and the studies, let's take a look at the plot options. So essentially, I can select the train, 9517. I'm going to choose to plot the speed, energy, location, and distance, the results we saw on the one line. However, as you see in the list, there are many, many different result types we can plot from. I'm also going to select to plot the battery and show the current from the battery, uh, rectifier 11. And from the rectifier, we're going to plot the average demand, rolling demand, and peak demand. And I'm going to select to combine the plots 
You can either show them on their individual XY coordinates of their own plots, or you can combine them into one plot showing all. So the first one I'm pulling up is the rectifier. You can see uh, the rectifier demand. So we have that the average demand in purple and the rolling demand in red and the peak demand in green as shown. Now when I click any of those results, that plot disappears. So you can, you can click to hide it or to activate it. Next plot is the train. We, we plotted in train 9517. We decided to show the speed, kilowatt hour, location, and distance. So we can see on the y-axis that we do have those. We have distance, speed, and energy showing. Um, we can zoom in from the bottom at any particular spot of time. So the bottom allows us to zoom in. Another way to zoom in is by just selecting a specific area. So if you select this region, it'll automatically zoom in and you can double click to zoom out or we can just drag. And the final plot we wanted to look at was the battery. So we see the current, we can see when it was charging and when it discharged across the axis. And again, zoom into any particular region. These plots are extremely nice. You can have them in dark mode. You can keep the labels on and off or you can have them with a white background. And on the bottom left corner, you see the configuration and the report type. Now, in a different project, I ran for multiple sets of days. So this provided a 3D, data, 3D plot, because now I have three, three points of references. I have the current, and then I have time and day. So ETAP eTrax allows us to plot in 3D. And, it, and we can zoom in, we can zoom out, we can scroll around the 3D plots, Wherever your mouse touches the plot, you'll see the results of those coordinates. So we see X, Y, and Z at that particular location. These plots are, are a very nice way to view the results for attraction power systems. And the heat map is generated for alarming. So we see that the red is showing for a, a alerts and then we have yellow for marginal and the remaining items are in blue. Now we also have live plots so as I run the simulation with these plots activated the results of the plots will fill as the simulation runs. So right now on the battery on the current we can see the discharge and now that the train 9517 has kicked in the results are dynamically updating live with the simulation as the train is running. And wherever you place your cursor, you can see the result, the result points at that particular location. So these are live plots. You have the option to copy this plot to clipboard as an image to put it on any deliverable. You can export all the data points to Excel. You can export the plot as an image or print directly from the plot analyzer. That train is done with the results. We can also see the battery is continuing to charge and discharge throughout the whole timestamp that we selected to run from 8.20 a.m. to 12.15. And finally, you can also take a look at any of the results through the report manager. If I select any report type, you'll see we have a plethora of Excel reports to choose from with all the results tabulated in a nice, easy to read Excel report. We have now covered the train performance calculation of eTrax. And this only included the views, the modeling, the train calculation, the unified engine, but there are other expansion add-ons you can add to eTrax. We, we looked at the transmission system. We did not, however, see the relays that were integrated. You can take the distance and overcurrent protection and incorporate star Z, which is distance protection onto your eTrax model. And as with eTap, there are many different applications that you can add on to your license. So if you want to do unbalanced short circuit calculations, harmonics, uh, analyze ground grid, look at the underground cabling and do perform thermal analysis on the underground cablings in duct bank or direct buried. And then we will cover soon the traction SCADA power management system capabilities. And for safety, whenever you're doing any changes or even if you're not, you haven't done your arc flash, you can incorporate AC and DC arc flash calculations to your traction model, to your transmission system, 
um, and, and make sure any switch plans that are provided to the operators can be simulated within eTracks as well. Successful and continuous management of data in a digital substation is a complex process, and it requires orchestration that addresses data management, training for personnel, um, integration between systems, maintenance testing, documentation, and any change order workflows. All these needs, including improving reactive procedures, slow lagging health indicators, crew delays and restoring outages, unplanned downtime, grid failures, ineffective change management, are ultimately impacting the customer, whether it be a consumer for distribution company, a transportation station, or a bulk system operator for a generation plant. There are many reasons for an organization to embark on a digital transformation, and it always begins with digitization. We have the digital twin from the design and planning side, but we want a single source of truth for the operators. And this provides it. Because of the digital twin, you now have information to look at real-time data on the model. The model can be validated against this real-time data. And before any expansion projects are started, you will know that the digital twin you're using to simulate these conditions is validated against your as-is environment. You can also use ETAPS event playback for root cause analysis. If you want to look at something that happened historically, you can bring that back into ETRACS and rerun simulations for forensic analysis and replay sequence of events. You can evaluate switch plans for restoration or scheduled maintenance. And the predictive alarms on this will prevent any incorrect switching operations. And we can take a look at simulated data versus estimated data at non-telemetered locations. Uh, telemetered alarms are very common. So when you have a meter, it's very easy and common to have an alarm against that equipment that, that is metered. But certain devices don't have meters attached to them. It is very difficult to get alarms for non-telemetered devices. But we can use estimated measurements for non-essential locations providing us the information we need to set alarms for this equipment and these locations. This traction power project expanded the use of a design model to a digital twin, which can be used for operation information. ETAP contains native communication to IEDs, RTUs, SCADA servers, and other devices using industry standard protocols, such as Modbus, OPC UA, DMP3, and IEC 61850. This model shows when the switches are changing position or if a breaker opens or closes and is set to display any configuration change from the field within the model. The meter data is shown in blue and is updating at an interval set by the operator. So you can set it for every second, two seconds. The frequency of the model updates and the real-time data is, is operator set. The data in red is state estimation data. State estimation processes telemetry data, such as power measurements, to obtain an estimate of the magnitudes and phase angle of the buses at non-telemetered locations. Using state estimation can drastically reduce the amount of meters required since, there are only, since they are only needed in critical locations. Using real-time data with state estimation highlights the areas with data errors. This helps validate the engineering model and the SCADA system together. Also, the alarm management system is triggered for any thresholds or event changes set by the operator. So if you have power flow thresholds, you can set those, or in this case, we see the circuit breaker trips, set an alarm or returning the switches back to normal are another notification. And these alarms can be acknowledged at any time. They can be deleted. They also can be sent via text or email to, to the personnel out on the field. And there's a very easy to use filtering system. So you can filter by device type, um, time stamps. You can look at, at different times to see what alarms triggered at those particular during that time period. Um, here we're showing it by, by device type. So I can filter per device to see what alarms were triggered for that device component name. Um, you can filter by measurement, by message, priority. So you can set the different thresholds as a priority based alarm 
and then filter by that priority level. The Traction SCADA HMI provides a modern dashboard with electrical intelligence and situational awareness. This is a view of a substation from a SCADA screen. This shows the high level connectivity and signifies any alarms in a very easy to use interface. We can look at the details of the substation. I also have one for the train lines. So in this case, I'm looking at the train lines from station to station and any alarms are immediately displayed and very easy to identify. Another key component to the digital transformation journey is an asset management system. ETEP eProtect is a centralized enterprise protection asset management solution that communicates with field protection relays and the ETAP protection and coordination modules to manage location, information, and settings throughout the life cycle of protective relays and substation assets. In this webinar, I'm not going to go into too much detail about each protect since we have an existing detailed webinar on our website. But to make sure we understand the digital journey of a traction power network, I wanted to cover the asset management system. Having an asset management system increases the data quality by automatically validating the settings in your model against actual field settings. You can manage relay setting changes with the tools provided and keep an up-to-date report on protection system maintenance plans. And these items allow you to comply with any local regulatory standards you may need to submit reports to. And all of this information is viewable on clear defined dashboards provided which contain critical protection information for health monitoring and maintenance. And if you integrate eProtect with ETEP's advanced fault analysis system, you can then determine fault types, you can improve fault location accuracy, and this overall picture provides a thorough assessment and validation of relay settings. eProtect communicates with the protective relays via FTP, SFTP, IEC 61850, and retrieves the settings from the field and passes the as-found settings to the design and protection modules. After the engineers complete the protection studies, the protection engineers can send their recommendations back to the eProtect database. All this is done with full documentation on versioning control and management, which can be viewed on user-created dashboards. The eProtect centralized database can also download waveforms from the relays, RTUs, DFRs, and store the events and disturbance records, which can then be passed back to the analysis station to perform further forensic analysis. This analysis can be done to determine the accurate location of the fault. This fault location can be used in other systems, such as your outage management system or restoration. But ultimately, the life cycle management between the engineering model and field settings keep your protection assets verified and validated for any operation and optimization decisions. A big part of the job of operators is education on the specific project and system that they're working on. EOTS, which is an operator training simulator, utilizes the ETAB Digital Twin Foundation to provide operators with an effective learning environment. This is to improve and augment their knowledge of the actual system. With a Digital Twin Foundation and learning environment interfaces for operators, the interfaces are based on SCADA screens, PMS, or even the OMS system. The training simulator provides realistic responses to actions taken by the operator to evaluate normal and emergency conditions. This ensures operator readiness for any current or future conditions and emergencies, whether it is steady state or dynamic event. Having a detailed operator training simulator allows operator teams to bring new hires up to speed in a much faster timeline. Here's a quick architecture showing the flow of information. In the center sits the instructor, which can receive real-time data. From the existing SCADA, it can receive historical data from the ETAP playback service or simulated data from the ETAP analysis machine. From here, the trainer can use this real-time historical or simulated data to initialize the trainer's environment. The trainees then can run through the training plan performing operator actions and seeing the system responses by the digital twin all while operating on the various SCADA interfaces. Finally, the trainee's actions are sent to the trainer for review.
The ETAP Quality Assurance Program ensures that our software meets the highest standards and regulations. Whether it's our ArcFlash software, traction power software, or power management system, ETAP is thoroughly verified and validated. ETRAC specifically is validated against field measurements provided by projects and industry standards, including cases within Senelec EN50641. Both AC and DC traction power analysis have been verified and validated. This plot is showing the results versus field measurements of total energy. This was done for MRVC, a Mumbai railway project. ETRAX is used for many different types of railway projects, including AC railways, DC metros, high-speed rail, freight heavy rail, light rail, signaling systems, consulting firms. Many consultant firms are using ETRAX for these projects, universities research, and rolling stock manufacturers. Why do our clients use ETAP? So we've talked about many of the reasons here today, but in summary, from a technology perspective, the advanced technology provides an easy to use graphical user interface, a synchronized GIS and one line diagram, an integrated AC and DC analysis solution, multi-dimensional database for unlimited scenarios, interfaces with other applications, and attraction eSCADA for real-time predictive analytics. So in summary, eTrax is becoming the global standard for traction power systems. Centralize all your information from planning, protection, and operations into one digital twin model. This will help with improving train performance, optimizing substation capacity, analyzing unplanned events on electrical demand, and eliminate any estimation using real-time data with a verified and validated solution.